when we talk about harmful pathogens, you know, you're talking about mold, viruses, bacteria. We're looking at everything, and we wanted a tool that was going to not only improve the air quality, but also improve the way our systems run. It's going to help keep our ventilation systems cleaner. Uh, we know how to maintain this. Uh, we know that it's going to help our filters to catch things in the air that bother people. So yes, this is a full gambit, something that's going to help us for, for now and also in the future for anything to come. Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Humpton, CEO of Siemens USA, and thanks for tuning in to the Optimistic Outlook podcast. What you're listening to here is actually part two in a series of episodes focused on the effort to reopen America's schools. If you haven't already, I hope you'll also listen to part one, where we explored how Malloy College in New York is using our air purification solutions to bring students back onto campus. Now, in this episode, you're going to hear the story about how we supported the opening of a K-12 school district in Augusta, Maine. You'll hear from John Stonier, the school system's director of building and grounds, and my colleague, Eric Metzel, who guided John through the project. Let me just share this thought, though, before we get into the episode. You know we're making tremendous progress with the national vaccine rollout. We're hearing that, in fact, there may be enough vaccine for everyone who wants it to have access by May. And the vast majority of teachers nationwide will soon be vaccinated. So does this mean we need to take our focus off of improving air quality in our schools? Or do we still need to do this? And that's what I want to show you. Yes, we do. The opportunity before us is so much bigger than just the vital effort to be reopened. We have technology. We know that school infrastructure nationwide is aging. And we know that right now we have this moment where there are federal resources and funding available to us to help us drive change. It's in addressing this immediate problem that we actually have the opportunity to make a step change, creating environments that are as healthy as they should be, where all our students can learn better and where we're ready to face the crises that come next. That's the perspective we have in these episodes focused on education. You're gonna learn how we can safely reopen schools today and how focusing on this infrastructure, not just vaccines, is what will help make a truly generational impact. So take a listen. John, I'll start today with you. You know, as we were preparing for this episode, we came across a letter your superintendent sent at the beginning of the pandemic to announce the closure of Augusta schools. He wrote how, at that time, the only effective strategy we knew of to prevent, to prevent the spread of the virus was physical distancing. He was right, and that's pretty remarkable. Think of how much we've learned over the past year and how building infrastructure and even technology can be an asset to us in mitigating the virus. Take us inside your experience at Augusta Schools from the closing to reopening and how you began to take on the task of reinventing the district's school infrastructure. Well, first, thank you for having me here today to talk about this. And for us, it was a very tough decision to close school. I mean, you don't want to have kids out of school. And immediately we started looking at what we could do with the federal funding that we received to try to make our schools safer. A lot of that was personal protective equipment, uh, plexiglass, additional staffing, uh, looking at ways we could space the classroom by uh, purchasing additional furniture that would allow us to do so and also removing a lot of furniture. That was kind of our main big focus to begin. But then as we looked at reopening schools, we really tried to start looking at things that we could go above and beyond and such things as air purification was a big ticket item for us. And as we started to get additional funding, that's when that took off and we really started to focus on that. Yeah, I know that funding that's come in from uh, places like the first the CARES Act and now the American Rescue Plan is going to be a game changer. And I mean, we're thrilled about the fact that there are some $280 billion worth of funds available to both K through 12 and higher education. So we're working with folks to make sure they know how to access and use those resources. Yes, I would agree. And, you know, it was a big part of educating ourselves. Um, we really relied on people like Eric to come in and help us and, you know, give us that education we needed so that we could update our school board, our community. You know, we wanted our parents and students and staff to be comfortable with what we were doing. And 
the information they gave us was just amazing. I'm so glad to hear that. And let's let's check in with Eric. Eric, Siemens has strong partnerships with K through 12 schools throughout Maine. And so take us inside your perspective, thinking back to the beginning of the pandemic. At Siemens, we started engaging with the science and drew on our expertise with industry standards for ensuring healthy buildings. So how did you work with Augusta Schools and with John to find the right reopening plan to meet their needs? Um, so we sat down internally um, and came up with kind of a three-part plan. And that kind of uh, what was in that plan was um, the first step was HVAC recommendations. We kind of went through a list of um, you know, increasing outdoor airflow, uh, confirming operation of all outside air dampers, changing op- occupancy schedules, discussing the MERV filter increases, per ash rate standards, that type of stuff. Um, we sent those out to all the customers. That was the basically the first step in this whole thing. Um, and it was a small step. Um, so the second step that we came up with was we had to figure out, okay, well, we're doing a little bit. This is a small step here. What are, what can we do? What technologies can we bring to the table here? And so we basically, you know, we got with the needlepoint ionization team. We had many calls. We set up many calls to um, understand the technology. So we were, you know, sort of a trusted advisor in this whole thing. Um, and you know, after meeting with John multiple times and him, port, you know, bringing the information to his. Um, school board and the superintendent, they were all on board with it. Um, and that was the first, kind of the first part of this whole thing uh, with working with John. And the third part, we knew early on that there was going to be some other additional funding that was coming down the pipeline. Um, and so I got in touch with John and said, hey, let's look at different areas in your school that have been pain points and things that, you know, ventilation wise that you would like to improve. Um, and so we had you know, that was kind of this next step. We, we've we sat down a few times, gone over some things, put some budgets together. Um, and that would be basically the next phase here and upgrading a lot of this really outdated equipment. Yeah, you know, we're hearing about just how old so much of our school infrastructure is. Some 40% of all schools need to have HVAC systems upgraded. So there's a lot of work to be done out there. And, and it sounds like this phased approach is, is really helpful. John, you know, when I hear about the kinds of things Eric is talking about, you know, whether it's technology or whether it's other techniques you're using, I'm realizing, you know, this is not only a tool to help schools safely reopen, but to actually create safer, healthier environments for students, teachers, and administrators in the years to come. But what's been the reaction among the Augusta schools community and parents to having this in place? Has it increased confidence in being able to return to in-person learning? Well, it's hard to gauge that totally. We are still currently educating people in our community. We're doing that through our our school board, through word of mouth, uh, Facebook, whatever we can do. Um, I know that our staff is very excited. We just recently completed this project, and you know they were it made them feel more comfortable district-wide, because we looked at this as a whole and we, we tackled the whole district. Um, so they were very, very positive with this. Um, I, do, I do believe that this is going to help in the future. And when I promoted this, I was very excited about this product because I didn't look at it just for dealing with this one issue. I looked at it as a whole as what could we do to make our schools better for years to come. And uh, that's why this was such a great system to go with. Yeah, I really want to pull the thread on this idea of making things healthier. We are in the midst of this, um, you know, the rollout of the vaccines. Of course, there's there's real-time conversation going on right now about the virus mutating and that we'll need other vaccines in the future to help us. So clearly, you know, putting in technologies that are meant to attack all pathogens actually helps us, oh, I don't know, I've been jokingly saying vaccinate the building. Um, I, I mean, are you thinking of this as one of those proactive steps that'll that'll put us on a good footing all around? Yes, I like how you put that. When we talk about harmful pathogens, you know, you're talking about mold, viruses, bacteria. We're looking at everything, and we wanted a tool that was going to not only improve the air quality, but also improve the way our systems run. It's going to help keep our ventilation systems cleaner. Uh, we know how to maintain this. Um, we know that it's going to help our filters to catch things in the air that bother people. So yes, this is a full gambit 
something that's going to help us for, for now and also in the future for anything to come. Eric, as, as I hear the plan and the, the phased approach is helpful, tell us about what comes next. Sure, yeah. So um, part of this next phase that we're working with John on is, is upgrading these 13 air handlers, uh, multiple unit ventilators. These, the standards 50 years ago were much different than they are today. So a lot of this old equipment in all of K through 12 really needs to be upgraded. Um, you're really not getting the, the right ventilation, um, you know, based on the standards that they require today. So um, the other thing about this too, is that it's really hard for schools to secure funding for, you know, just one air handler or, you know, one or two univent, univentilators, let alone 13. So this is something that can be done in, you know, one file swoop um, to get all of this, you know, all these pain points that may, you know, some of these superintendents or you know, facilities directors have uh, to get these done and, and upgraded. So um, the upgrades will actually effectively triple the outside air circulating throughout the building, which is extremely important. It's a huge help in mitigating, you know, the spread of germs, um, which is obviously at the forefront of everything that's going on right now. This project, coupled with the needle point ionization that John's already installed and, you know, all the recommendations that we gave out that he's already, um, you know, put in place, uh, you know, he's done a really tremendous job in getting um, the buildings, you know, his district in a safe position or a better position to, you know, get kids and, and faculty back to school safely. You know, we're in this remarkable moment when so many um, of our goals can be met with changes that we'll make in projects like this. Yes, we need to be healthier. Yes, we need to be more energy efficient. Has this been on your agenda before now? Well, yes. I, as I was talking about doing other projects, you know, I'm, we're constantly looking to the future. Uh, we want to bring the best technology, the best equipment into our facilities to provide the best air quality. Uh, and this goes for everything we're trying to do. So this, this is a key thing for us. It's just important. Uh, you have to keep up with the technology, which also, as we talked about earlier, is constantly making things run more efficiently. It's controlled better. Uh, you have way better control on your computer than you ever had. It's just very exciting. Sometimes it gets hard to keep up with, but uh, it's just part of the job and it keeps you motivated. So a lot of stakeholders are involved in making sure that you have the support you need, John, for carrying out a phased plan like this one. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what kind of team it takes to implement a project like this. Yes, and thank you for asking me that question because it gives me a great opportunity to express how important it is to have a group of people working around you that support what you're trying to do. And that stems right from the top, from our superintendent to our business manager, uh, to our administrative team and the schools of principals and our school board. You know, without their support and them taking time to listen to what we present to them, this wouldn't be possible. You get this federal funding and everyone's trying to think of everything they can do to make things great for kids. And the fact that they took time to listen and take this information in has just helped, helped me to get this job done. And it's going to make our schools better in the future for it. But what you've seen is the potential to use this moment as a, a generational moment in upgrading the systems overall. So congratulations to you for taking the bull by the horns and, and making the changes. Thank you. So Eric, you and John have been working together for a couple of years now. How do you go about getting to know the, the, the true issues that a customer like John is dealing with? Well, I will say it is extremely easy to work with John. He's very open and transparent about things. He's very straightforward. So it's, you know, we, we work really well together. And, you know, if I need information, he gets me information right back, you know, same, same way. And what's amazing is when you find leaders like John who recognize an opportunity, rally the resources, communicate openly, then it gives us the chance to drive a change that in this case is going to really be a step change for the system overall. So actually, this leads nicely into a final question I have for John. We know that in challenging times like this, there's we're not, we don't have the option of going back to where we once were. We know that what we have to do is move forward. And you are one of those pathfinders for us. You're setting an example uh, for how things can work in the future. So let's flesh this picture out. With these infrastructure improvements in place and, and the right technology in place to reopen confidently, tell us 
your vision for what the K through 12 experience in your school district is going to be like in these coming years? I think that for some time, you're going to see us still wearing some masks and practicing some sort of social distancing based on guidelines. But my hope is that through continuing to improve on our air purification systems, our ventilation, uh, continuing to educate the community, that we're going to be able to make people feel comfortable. We're going to get them back into these buildings doing what they need. We need these kids back in here. We know that they need it. And that's our, that's our ultimate goal. I think we're going to continue to work with someone like Eric to continue to educate ourselves on newer methods. There's always going to be something coming out that's going to be better, but we want to make sure it's proven and we want to make sure it's cost effective for our school district. And I trust that we're going to get that information that we need from Eric and, and through Siemens and, and uh, we'll just keep building upon that. It's just going to continually educate ourselves to help educate these kids. What a great example and what a model for so many other school systems. John, in partnership with us at Siemens and the, the many stakeholders within the Augusta, Maine school system, have come together to implement change. And here they are reopening from two days to four days to hopefully back to normal operations as soon as possible. And I think we've learned a lot in this episode. So now I want to direct you to our show notes where you can access the resources we have available to support schools, colleges, and universities to reopen and restore in-person learning. Thanks for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform or to the Siemens YouTube channel. And for show notes and more, go to Siemens.com optimist.